A block of mass m placed inside a box descends vertically with acceleration a. The block exerts a force equal to one fourth of its weight on the floor of the box. The value of a will be. Okay. See now, uh, uh, many of you have been uh, asking me for the flow of uh, you know how to um, keep a flow chart in mind while solving the questions and loss of motion. See, actually there exists no such specific flow for one individual question. However. If you were to understand the whole concept of mechanics, you know, I would say you just um, you know, with specific uh, reference to this chapter, I would say you first choose your frame of reference, then you identify the system of forces or the system of bodies, then you isolate the body which you want to study, then you apply the sigma fx and sigma fy and find out which is equal to zero or which is equal to m into a. Uh, the probability of uh, you getting a problem, you know, having both of these having uh, uh, equal to ma would be really less, and then solve for the unknown. Okay, so how do we go for it? First one, exactly frame of reference, isolate the system. Sorry, uh, determine the system, isolate the body, draw the free body diagram, find out sigma fx and sigma y, and solve for unknown. So here, what I've done is for our reference, I have what I've done is I'll choose frame of reference to be. I'll choose frame of reference to be inertial frame, which is the non-accelerating frame, and therefore the, the man is standing here. Okay, so this is the frame of reference, and he's watching the phenomenon like this. Maybe this is at some height edge. That is not a point of concern here. So the system is actually the system is actually the block and system is actually the block and the block and the box. Okay. So this M represents the block and this represents the overall box. Isolate the body. Uh, I'll isolate both the bodies here, which are the block and the box, specifically floor of the box. Okay. And then draw the sigma fx and sigma that, that will come to, to see that very quickly now. So this is the box. I have taken only the floor of the box, floor of the box. Okay. Now, what is given the question? The block exerts a force equal to one fourth of its weight on the floor of the box. I'll draw it in, in um, you know, in a, uh, a free body diagram. This is the floor. So, and force is exerted on the floor of the box, right? For the block, uh, floor of the box by the block. So, this is this yellow line here. This represents force on the floor due to the due to the block see now what we need to understand is by newton's third law of motion if a body is applying a force on the floor definitely the floor will apply a reactive force or a reaction force onto the causing body so here the floor is experiencing a force due to the block which means the floor will the floor will now give a reaction to the block so if i consider the free body diagram of the block which is having mass m it will receive a normal reaction on the block due to the floor see now i request that you go through this explanation one more time because this is the concept here if you, if you know if you're not able to understand this then probably you're just you know um, uh, you, you're just trying to find a solution in a very quick way we're not uh, you know just you're just trying to uh, get in a mathematical equation and solving it you're not understanding the concept so we can say that normal reaction on the block due to the floor is actually equal to the it's actually equal to the force acting on the floor due to the block which is given to us as 1 by 4th of the weight of the block, which is 1 by 4 of mg. And what is the weight of this block? It is m into g, right? Okay. So, what are the various forces acting on this block? Number one is gravity, which will result in mg. Second is force on the block, force on the block from the surface, from the surface, which is the floor which is equal and opposite to force on the floor on the block, which is given to us as the block exerts a force one fourth of its weight. Okay, right. Now, now if we, okay, uh, I think I have got some um, other explanation here, but, but let us not go into that now. Let us for this block, okay, let us for this block, let us write down 
what is sigma f y is equal to sigma f y is equal to m into a instead of m we actually have here capital m into a right and what is sigma f y see what is the net what is the net direction of motion the net direction of motion is vertically downwards right it is descending so it is vertically downwards so the net direction of motion is net direction of motion is downwards so maybe i'll just write it over here so net direction of motion is downwards what are the forces acting on it we have weight acting we have weight acting downwards and then we have normal reaction acting normal reaction acting upwards how do we take the sign of the forces we just write it down here m into a how many forces are acting now we have n and we also have we also have mg how do we take the sign see what is the overall direction of motion direction of motion is downwards so all the forces which are acting downwards should be taken as positive and all the forces which are acting upwards should be taken as negative so n would be negative and mg would be taken as positive therefore we can write this as mg minus ma is equal to n right and what is what is given to us so we need to find out a right okay uh, let us take this as common so we have m into g minus a is equal to n what is the value of n it is given to us as it is 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 into mg 1 by 4 into mg and therefore this further becomes okay maybe i should have taken the so we have mg minus ma is equal to 1 by 4 into mg therefore what is ma ma would be equal to mg minus 1 by 4 mg which is 4 minus 1 3 mg by 3 mg by 4 so m and m will cancel what we get is a is equal to m by m is 1 a is equal to 3g by 3g by 4 okay now let me uh, take you one more time to the understand the concept of normal reaction see in case one in case one what are the various forces acting on the body in case one the the forces acting on the body is actually only one force which is weight of the body acting downwards now most of the time students get confused by saying that this weight is actually acting on the floor of the body no it is not it is acting on this block it is not acting on the floor of the uh, table here it is acting on this block which means if you draw it like this it's okay it, it, it really means that you are correct but I would actually suggest that you draw it only like this not touching the table now when it is on it when it is resting on the table now the things will change why now we can say that the weight is acting downwards yes now since weight is acting downwards the the table is now under the influence of the force of weight which means table is receiving weight from the from the ball so let us say table is receiving table is there is some weight so this is weight maybe i'll write like this this is action on the table due to the ball by newton's third law of motion we know that if such an action takes place what also should be taking place exactly every action will have equal and opposite equal and opposite reaction so now we have reaction we have reaction on the ball due to the table and this angle is 90 degree therefore we can call this reaction as normal reaction acting on the ball due to the table or in other words a normal reaction in okay so if you draw the free body diagram of the ball what are the various forces acting on it if you draw the free body diagram of the ball the only force acting on it in the first case right in this case one in this case one is actually the weight of the ball alone whereas in this case which is case two if you draw the free body diagram of the ball uh sorry my bad if you draw the free body diagram wait um uh, 
Okay, uh, I think I was trying to convey something else here. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe that, that also makes sense. That also makes sense. I want you to understand that aspect also. So let us let us fade out this this one. Let us let us not consider this. Okay, let us consider only the free body diagram of ball and table in this case. So here the free body diagram of ball will have two forces. One which is weight, right, and the other which is the which is the normal reaction on the ball due to the table. But if you draw the free body diagram of the table alone, how many forces are acting on it? Yeah, exactly. One force will definitely be mg of table, and the other force is, force is actually the mg. Oh, sorry, no, not mg of the ball. It, it should be actually mg by it should be mg by four of the ball. Which means this is actually the reaction on the reaction on the table by the reaction on the table by the ball. Right, so that's the difference. So how many forces are acting on the ball? There are two forces. One, which is mg of the ball and normal reaction on the ball due to the table. And how many forces are acting on the table? Weight of the table, which is acting downwards and reaction on, sorry, um, and not the reaction, there should be the, and action on the, right, and action on the table by the ball. Right, so I think yes, this th th this differentiation is really important for us to, you know, you know, to uh, to master the uh, problems when it comes to solving, or when it comes to problems involving uh, reaction and uh, no normal reaction. Okay, so having said that, let's move on to the next question now.